was growing up, I used to watch um, The Galloping Gourmet. Do you remember The yes. Galloping Gourmet? And uh, Julia Child. And it was a lot of fun watching them show how to cook, and the, the programs were very informative. Today, they still have cooking shows, although it's often people that are cooking together on a talk show, but they've also begun a new category of cooking show, which is competitive cooking. I don't know if you've seen any of these, where one team is competing against another, or one chef against another, to see who can make a recipe best and to make it fastest. So I saw a clip from one of these TV shows, where there is one team competing against another, and each team went and they gathered all their ingredients, and they were getting ready to cook. And one lady on one of the teams was, she had to open a jar, and they were being timed, and she had to do it very quickly, because it was part of getting the recipe completed on time, and she couldn't get the jar open. Well, there was a live studio audience, and her parents were there. So she ran over to her father, and she handed him the jar. Her dad opened the jar, handed it back, she went back, and she was able to complete the recipe. And there's times when we do that, where we can't open a jar, we can't open something, so we'll take that to someone, and they'll help, and they'll get that thing opened. Jesus had been to this region before, in today's gospel, and they knew Jesus' ability to work miracles. And they knew that there was a person there who was suffering. He had an impediment in his speech, or he was mute. It depends on the translation that you read. Also, he was deaf. And as much as those physicians tried, as much as people tried to do to help this man, they weren't able to open him in the way he wanted to be opened. But they knew that there was someone who could open him. And so they brought him to Jesus. And in this, we see the first great lesson for us. Our faith, our prayers, the history and the teachings of the Armenian Church refers to Jesus as the great physician, not only of bodies, but of souls. He is the physician of souls and bodies. So when there is something that we need open within us, not just a physical ailment that we need healing, but also when there's something in us that is closed, something we wish would open, a part of us we wish would open up to the word of the Lord, to the healing of the Lord, to transformation, then we bring ourselves to God. Because our tradition tells us very clearly that we have to go to Christ with the sense of humility, understanding that when we speak of the blind and the deaf and the, and the dumb who need healing, first and foremost, our church fathers tell us that we're speaking of ourselves. That we have to recognize within ourselves ways in which we are blind and deaf and and if we don't do that, then we are lacking humility. The truly humble person will look at themselves and say, I need to grow. There are ways I need to see things more clearly. There are ways I need to hear the word of the Lord more clearly. And there are ways I need to speak that are more glorifying to God. So we bring ourselves to Christ so that he might open us and when there is someone in our lives who we think needs to be opened in a particular way, and we try talking to them as we should in love, and even admonish in love, and they will not budge, what do we do? We bring that person to Christ in prayer. We share the word of, the God, of God with them through word, through action, and we also take them to Christ in prayer, knowing that he is the one who can open hearts. So the first thing is bring him to Jesus. And then we read that in order to heal the deaf man and this mute man, Jesus took him aside. He took him aside. And this is a reoccurring theme in the teachings of our Lord and the teachings of our church father, that while we are certainly to have a corporate prayer life where we come together on the Sabbath as God has commanded to pray together to receive his precious body and blood, and to keep that Sabbath tradition, we also absolutely have to have a personal, a private prayer life where we on a regular basis go aside with the Lord, take time away with Him, just to speak with Him, just to hear Him, and to schedule that time daily. Now often that time for me is when I take a walk, and I try to take a walk four or five times a week for a half hour or an hour, there's an old tradition in the early church priests before beginning the Badrach would say all the sins that they committed during the week. But the confession became too long, so they decided to formalize it. But we're supposed to be aware of our sins, and I want to share 
one with you today. I was taking a walk last week, and I walked for 15 minutes, and for 15 minutes I didn't pray at all. And I didn't realize it until 15 minutes had passed. I was going through so many things in my head that had to get done, so many things that were on my mind, just racing through them, and conversations I had had, and conversations I wanted to have, and plans I had made, or plans I wanted to make, and things that needed to get done, that after 15 minutes I hadn't said a single prayer. So I confess that to you. I shouldn't go 15 minutes without praying. But it's something that's supposed to be part of our lives, where we empty our hearts to the Lord. We don't just think about things ourselves, but we offer them up in prayers, and we tell the Lord what's heavy on our hearts. We tell the Lord what's on our minds. We take that time aside with Him. And when we take that time aside with Him and open our hearts and speak of what is on our minds, what's heavy on our hearts, then He transforms us. And He wants to transform us. But He wants to take us aside in order for that to happen. It's not enough, though, to physically go aside. We have to put aside those things that are absolutely filling our minds either through contemplative prayer, through offering it up, or through trying to just silence those thoughts so they don't overwhelm us. Because it's possible to actually be at a silent place in the middle of a crowd, the church fathers tell us. You could be at a silent place in the middle of a crowd. Jesus even says, when you pray, go into your room and close the door and pray in private. And when you pray in private, your Lord God will hear you. So it's possible, the church fathers say, to be in private in your room when you are in the midst of the crowd as well, if we have that focus. But so too it's possible to be in the midst of a crowd while we are alone. That is to say, we can be alone, but we have so many people and things on our minds that we're not alone with the Lord. We're alone, but we're in the midst of the crowd in our minds and in our spirits. The challenge is getting to a place of quiet with our Lord. Dirui and I, when we were living in Jerusalem, we were staying at a convent, and the sisters in that convent had a particular ministry where they would clean the wax out of people's ears. And you would be amazed at the amount of parents that would bring in their children, saying, this kid needs his ears cleaned out. Or wives bringing in their husbands, he needs his ears cleaned out, or vice versa. But what we really need is to have our souls cleaned out. And when we come to our Lord in confession and in prayer, he does just that. And when we truly do have our ears open and hear the word of the Lord, then we will be moved to repentance and we will be moved to tears. We will be moved to joy as well. So bring yourself and others to Jesus, just you and him alone. And the third thing that we see in today's gospel is that this man was healed by the word of God. The word of Jesus is healing. The words of Jesus are unlike any other words. And when we learn and study his words, when we learn and study his teachings, focusing on his word is in and itself, when we are open, transformative to our souls. And when we are transformed, we help to transform our families, our places of business, our neighborhood, and the world. Scripture tells us, his word is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. And as we abide in his word, we learn to celebrate his glory. Psalm 19 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the skies proclaim the works of his hands. The sun and the moon and the stars naturally proclaim the glory of God. And if we are at one with God, if we are at the place of our true nature, and we were created to live in the image and likeness of God, then we will by our very nature glorify our God. It is only when we rebel against our God-given nature that we no longer glorify him. In Luke chapter 6, Jesus says, The good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And when our hearts are full of the abundance of God's glory and goodness, then we will speak of his glory and goodness. We will see his presence all around us and raise up his presence. We will see and celebrate his light. So yes, we have to study the word of God, but we also have to allow that word to embody us until we become purified. And we have a desire to stay and abide in the purity of Christ. 
there's a kind of animal, it's actually kind of a weasel, that uh, we don't see that much around here, but more north in America, up into Canada, and places in Europe, it's common, which is the ermine. It's a kind of a weasel. It's a white weasel. And hunters have a particular way of catching the ermine, because for this white weasel, for this ermine, it tries to keep itself perfectly white all the time. It doesn't like getting any dirt at all on its fur. So what hunters do is they don't set traps out to catch it. They don't want to damage the fur. They find the place where the weasel lives. They find the place where the weasel lives, the hole that it goes into, and they take grease and they put it all over the hole. And then they send out the dogs to chase down the weasel, to get the scent and chase down the weasel. And the dogs chase the weasel, and the weasel runs for the safety of its den. And when it gets to the door of the den, it won't enter because it's dirty. And that's the way the dogs are able to corner the weasel, and the hunters are able to go over and catch the weasel. It would rather die than be spotted. It would rather give up its life than be impure. And that's a certain kind of a purity that we too should desire. I want to stay and live in the purity of Christ and in his glory no matter what. I want to avoid any spot or any stain. Blessed are the pure in heart, scripture tells us, for they shall see God. So spend time <coughs> each day alone with your Lord in prayer, with your creator, with your Savior. Confess your sins to him. And each Sabbath, come here and receive the healing he offers, because the blood of Christ cleanses us from all righteousness. You know, we have nine daily services in the Armenian church, and the very first service that we do each day is called Kishadayin Javakatun, or the night service. And the very first words that are said in that service, after the Lord's Prayer is said, the very first words we hear are, Der yete eshetunis impanatz karanim yekesen zorkutunis ko Lord, if you open my mouth, if you open my lips, my mouth will sing forth your praise. The first thing we say is, I want the first words that I speak and every word that I speak today to be words that will glorify my Lord. <clears throat> so as we approach this week, let's learn and embody the lesson from today's gospel. Let's bring ourselves and others to Jesus on a daily basis, designating time to be alone with him in prayer and allowing ourselves to be changed by his words so that we might declare his glory together with his Father and Holy Spirit now and unto the ages.